Hey there. Still working on getting the Steel 036 Pro fixed up. Done a couple things, but today is definitely going to be probably the biggest job. We are going to be replacing the cylinder and piston. I'll try to get a good shot, but was, uh, that piston got pretty scored up when the uh, crank seal went out. So as you can see there, that is, that is really bad there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get all this replaced. To go look for parts for this saw to rebuild that top end, I looked at OEM first, and the prices that I found were just astronomically high. You could, in some cases, literally buy a new chainsaw for the price of the OEM parts. So, went to aftermarket. Uh, looking at the aftermarket, didn't really find much um, in the way of, you know, branded parts. Maybe, maybe one or two brands that were pretty expensive, but... The majority of everything I found was pretty much uh, non-branded aftermarket parts, you know, that people were buying and then just, you know, reselling under, you know, whatever whatever company name they had on Amazon and eBay. So I figured, hey, if I'm going down for, you know, non-branded aftermarket parts, why not find the best value? Well, we'll see about value. Why not find the best price that we can get um, with everything that I needed to rebuild this top end? So I, you know, sleuthed through Amazon, eBay, and eventually came across a Amazon deal that had the entire top end for the saw um, for just under $16. So let's dig in, see what we have. Here we go, the uh, $16 top end rebuild for the Steel 036. Let's go. All right, so I did actually uh, go through all of unboxing this and in a total rookie move, I actually just wasn't recording. So I'll at least run through the parts and show you how Amazon packed this. Um, came in a, just your normal Amazon uh, paper mailer, slightly packaged. Everything was in this bag. The spark plug box was smashed up, but hey, it's a spark plug, so it was fine, laying by its side. Um, rubber boot was in the bag. Again, you're not gonna hurt that, it's shipping in a bag. Uh, came with the uh, exhaust gasket cylinder base gasket and the crankcase gasket um that one was a little bent up but hey nothing was torn so no harm no foul so that's fine to have them other goodies in the bag decompression valve a uh, plug i guess in case you don't feel like using the decompression valve two crank bearings not gonna use those but hey always good to have spares same thing here uh crankcase seals so, hey, two more spares of them, can't go wrong. The uh, the bearing. And then the part that didn't catch in the first video was this, this box here had this cylinder wrapped nicely in plastic. So it's like shrink wrapped in plastic. Uh, took a look at the cylinder. Castings, pretty decent. All the surfaces that should be machined and have a good finish are machined and have a good finish. Checked out the threads, um, you know, spark plug, chamfer. So everything looked, honestly, pretty well um, deburred and in okay shape. Uh, so, heck, for getting this entire kit for 15 and change, pretty good. Uh, packed inside of the cylinder was piston here. Again, yeah, looked pretty solid as far as, you know, quality. Uh, at least on the surface here, looked looked not bad. Everything was smooth, deburred, no, nothing gnarly going on there. Piston rings, they were wrapped in plastic, uh, prevent from scratching anything. So, first set of piston rings, circ clips for retaining the wrist pin, and then the piston wrist pin there. Um, so I'm going to leave those in plastic just to well, not lose the circ clips and protect the finish on the kit. So, yeah, there's my uh, my second go at the unboxing here, but. Hey, for, for getting all of that for less than less than sixteen dollars, yeah. we'll see how it holds up. But all right, let's keep going and get this all put together. All right, so this uh, cylinder is actually super simple to get off. Um, it's just these four screws down here. Those are T twenty seven Torx, and I'll also pull off this handle to make it uh, easier to get that cylinder off. So 
Play me. Also need to disconnect the carburetor boot from the intake there. It's just one. I probably can't get a good shot in there in the dark. It's just one flathead. One flathead screw right there. All right, so that clamp's loose. And now we're just gonna pull the cylinder right up and off. These screws out of the way. Fall down to the crankcase. That would not be enjoyable to fish out because I'm sure that gets in there somewhere that wouldn't come back out. Alrighty. Just gonna get a little flathead screwdriver. Gently work that carburetor boot off the cylinder. Alright. And now for the big reveal. Watch in there. Oh, I can't get that. A little underwhelming there. All right. So there's a cylinder. And then there is the disgustingly. Grooved up piston. So, again, I'm not sure what on earth happened to that thing, but that's what we're going to get in there. We're going to put new piston, new cylinder on there. Call it a day. Hopefully, that'll get this, uh, this all back in good shape. That's yeah, pretty chewed up even on the intake side. All right, let's keep going. Okay, before we go any farther, got to get that uh, old base, ga base gasket removed. And uh, before I start picking at that, I'm going to hit this with the vacuum to try to make sure I can suck up anything loose uh, in the vicinity. I'm really trying to minimize chances of anything falling down into the crankcase. All right, now usually what I like to do before I go any further with the disassembly, pull the crank pretty much up, um, top that center, and get two pieces of uh, paper tower cloth. I stuck one there in the back. And then put the piston back, stick a, another one in the front. Um, they're big enough that if one if it doesn't get you know jammed all in then down in there you can pull it out so pair of tweezers but really what that's for is uh when you're pulling out that circlip there or anything else that you might accidentally drop really don't want that going down into the crankcase and just your luck it'll get itself stuck down in there and you know spend 30 minutes trying to fish it out so all right let's get that piston off of there a little circlip right there that you just grab it with a pair of needle nose pliers curl it in pulls right out there's the uh soft flipped around the other little circle clip or retainer ring holding in the wrist pin and just grab that with a pair of needle nose pliers just twist it right around. All right, now to get that wrist pin out of there, I'm just going to use this uh, brass rod that I have. But if you have a socket that fits in there, that'll work just as well. So drive that sucker out of there. Um, when you're hitting with the hammer, don't go crazy. You don't want to bend or damage any of your bearings or anything. 
on your connecting rod or down in the crankcase. So I'm going to tap this, but again, I'm just kind of not going too crazy. So. around for you guys, better angle. Alright. That's right on out of there. Wrist pin and piston are off again. Don't go crazy on there, just give it some gentle taps. All right, so now we have our top end here. Bearing that we're going to replace. Let's see. This one here doesn't look too bad. Looks like whatever was going on was pretty much isolated up to so in there, we'll still put the new one in. Alright, working on cleaning out. Make sure that's nice and clean. Don't want anything abrasive in there at all. Alright, for scraping off that base gasket, um, you're definitely going to get something that's not going to damage your, or score your metal, scratch it up at all. So this is I mean, literally a piece of trash. Literally a piece of trash that I of plastic something that broke um other good candidates like you get it's like um those clam shell cases that are you know super hard to cut open um sometimes those work good to cut a piece off and and use for a scraper but yeah just something that's a uh, piece of plastic that's not gonna scratch or mar that that, that surface that this has to sit on Okay, so I know when I had unboxed this cylinder, I said I was very happy with the finish on the inside. So happy with the finish, but um, looking at this thing more closely, there's a couple, you know, real sharp edges like that. That right there is razor sharp. Uh, and inside, I'm probably not going to be able to see it on the, the video, but, you know, a couple of rounds, a couple of these ports um, where they honed it, it, you know, left kind of a razor sharp uh, lip on there and I'm going to just go and, and knock that down because some of those are so thin I'm worried that they might uh, find their way break off and uh, get in the cylinder in the crankcase and we'll be starting all over again so let's get them real quick at the Dremel and just very very gently just take off just that sharp edge and then clean it up real good to get that metal filing out Okay, I got that cylinder all cleaned up, um, a couple birds knocked off and cleaned. So uh, one thing that we're gonna note when we put this piston on is the orientation of this piston. So this one has that little uh, arrow stamped or etched on the top. The arrow goes towards the exhaust port, but you might ask yourself, hey, what if someone put the arrow on backwards or I don't have an arrow? Um, how do you know and like, why is that arrow pointing to the exhaust port? So it's actually pretty easy to explain and figure out if for some reason you don't have an arrow or you have concerns about that. So see these grooves, nice and clean, clean, you come around. And then on the back here, so you have a pin there and a pin there. Those pins, look at the old piston here. Those pins are where 
the piston rings join together. So that's where that uh, joint in the piston ring is. And what's important about the orientation of this and those piston rings is you don't want that joint to be crossing any of these ports. So if you, I uh, probably can't get it good on the video here, but if you have the piston ring or those piston rings installed and have it in the cylinder here, those joints will ride basically right here on that wall and right there on that wall on either side of the intake. So those basically those seams in the piston ring will never cross any of these open um, positions and they'll stay there and there. Uh, I didn't put it in backwards, but there's a chance that if you have it in backwards in your engine, that joint will come across one of these, which has the potential for that, um, that seam to get caught on a port and you know, could cause all sorts of damage. So anyway, um, for our purposes, arrow towards the exhaust. And if you want to check that out on your own, um, basically you're just making sure that the seams of those piston rings don't cross any of the port openings. All right, let's continue putting this back together. Uh, now we get the fun part, at least for me, the uh, putting back together all the new stuff. So we're gonna get this piston installed. Um, one thing I do is the bearing, uh, the piston walls, pretty much everything. I put a very, very light coat of two-stroke premix oil on there. Um, rationale is that when this thing fires up the first time, have all those items pre-lubricated. Uh, you don't want to go too heavy um, because then you're just going to you know, have it get gunky and um, possibly get hot and carbonized on there. But yes, uh, just a light coat. So first up, we have our bearing for the top end. Just set that there. Some oil here. Just dip my finger in there and just put in a very, very light coat of premix oil in there. Bearing just slides right in like that. Put a piston with my oily fingers. Again, as we talked about. The exhaust arrow. Go, or the arrow goes toward the exhaust. Just gonna set that on top of there. Stay put. The wrist pin came in this nice little package to keep it clean. Try to open that up with oily fingers. Well, they did a good job packing that. All righty. Again, just a light coat of oil. All right. Pretty simple. First pin just slides. Just in. Don't force anything. So I was just wiggling it around, kind of just jiggle the piston a little bit. All right, so I got a little brass rod I used earlier to pull it out. It's nice and clean. Just use that to get that piston pin, wrist pin in just enough that you can see the groove for the cir circle to go into. Um, next up, we'll get that circle in there. All right, next up, we're gonna be putting the circlips into the piston here to, to hold that wrist pin in. The circlips, the ones that came with this kit, are just like look like this, like a little, little letter E. Um, I'm gonna try to explain this the best I can. Long story short, these are usually a pain in the rear to put in. Make sure you have glasses on, some sort of safety glasses or prescription because they can go pop out and you know travel uh, six miles across your garage, or basement, wherever you're at. Uh, the best way I've found to do this is, I mean, you're really going to be fighting them in. You try not to deform them too bad, but I usually start by 
kind of feeding this side in first and then grabbing this with a pair of pliers and just kind of twisting it a little bit to kind of close that circle down and try to get fight it into that groove. Um, so you can watch me struggle here again. It's I've never found a great way to do it. Um, there are OEM tools for the C style ones that put them in, but um, we're just gonna go ahead and fight it in with the old pliers and time. Well, I guess that wasn't as bad as I made it out to be. Didn't mean to scare you. Alrighty, so uh, that circlip is in there. Make sure it's in there. Yeah, so that sucker is. Try to get a good shot on there. That circlip is in there and. The, you might have seen there, I took a flathead screwdriver and kind of twirled it around. Uh, two-stroke engines, or maybe any engine, but at least two-strokes is what I mostly work on. Uh, I've always been taught to have the circlip opening either at the top or bottom. Uh, basically, the theory, as it's been explained to me, is that if the opening is either toward the front or the back, when the piston is at top or bottom of its travel, the inertia can basically make that gap, um, trying to get my fingers here to explain it, uh, can make that gap close, you know, so the piston goes flying up and then when it stops, that gap tries to close, which can, um, you know, detension it and you're fatiguing that spring out and eventually it can come out and cause, you know, horrendous expensive damage. Um, so I've not ever heard of anyone that actually happened to, but Again, one of these little things I've always been taught, which is have the gap top or bottom to mitigate that. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna take this wrist pin, gently slide it tight up against that freshly installed circlip. Oh, look at that, it looks beautiful. Hold that piston in, put wrist pin in just how it should. Look when it works. All right, let's get the salt turned around. Magnetic flywheel. Here we go for the other side. This side's a little bit more challenging since I don't have as clean of a shot to, to get in up here. Let's make it happen. Again, you'll see I left the uh, paper towel here covering up all the little sneak paths. Down to the crank, crank case. Not fun to get a circlip fished out of your crank case. I will not confirm or deny, deny if I've ever had to do that myself. But don't make it a possibility. Again, just work slowly and carefully. Just take your time. There it is. All right, and again, you can see that opening is right around there. About uh, nine o'clock if you're looking at it. I'm just gonna take this flathead screwdriver. Just gently rotate it so that the opening in the piston ring, I can't really see that. There's a better shot. See the way I rotated that around 
that opening is pretty much facing vertical on both of these pistons. So again, looks to be on both these circlips. So and that covers the install of the piston. All right, time to put on piston rings. So the rings, if you look at them, let me try to get this good shot here. If you look at the rings, they have this little uh, chamfer or something, like a little, little geometric feature right there. If you gently close the ring together, you'll see that it makes a little shape, just like the pin in your piston. So that is the orientation of the ring. You want to make sure that, um, in this case, that's facing up the way I'm holding it here. And then that way, when this closes, that pin sits right into that shape. Very light coat of oil. Two-stroke Premex going on here. All right. That pin does sit on the top. I'm going to start with the lower ring. I don't need to put a ring over top of another ring. Just start with one end in and then just slowly feed it around. Goal is don't deform anything more than you, you need to. All right, those are there. Try to get a, grab that camera and see if I can get a good video shot of that for you guys. All right, so you can see the pin there and then I'm gonna compress the ring by hand. You can see that seals up nice and tight around that pin. So we're gonna do the same thing. Top pin. Top pin, the top of piston ring. Alrighty, same thing. Light coat of two stroke oil remix. That's gonna go on just like so. There you have it. So just compress it by hand, and you can see. That lines right on up with the with the piston pin there. All right, let's get that cylinder on there. Okay, so here's the cylinder. I got it all nice and cleaned up. One last go through, make sure you don't have anything. Nothing sharp, nothing, no grit, no nothing in there. You want this as clean as possible. The big uh, rectangle, that's your exhaust. Circle, that's your intake. Don't put it on backwards. All right, again, just gonna put a very, very light coat of two-stroke Premex oil on here. The solder wall. Uh, you can see me going crazy here because I uh, did deburr and remove those sharp edges. Otherwise, uh, you should be careful there. I'll see you. Might be getting a couple stitches. All right, so right now all I'm gonna do is just get these pre-lined up on top of their pins as close as possible. Um, there's probably a compression tool out there, piston ring compression tool that works for these small engines. I've always had luck just doing them by hand. Um, never really had that issue in the top piston ring here you just kind of all right that one looks like it's on now we get the second piston ring here carefully compress those in Again, moral of the story, just, just take your time. Don't, don't don't jam anything, don't force anything. Just make sure those seams are lined right up where they need to be. And just, you know, like I was just taking my fingernails and just carefully pushing those, pushing those together. The seams on the piston ring. Took a 
the time and went together just fine. Lowering the cylinder into place, making sure my gasket doesn't move around too much on me. Getting the boot lined up to install onto the, the intake here. Again, you're probably tired, gonna get tired of hearing me say it, but you know, with all this stuff, just check it. Don't don't go crazy. Don't get impatient. Or force anything. Just take your time. If something's you know seems like it's stopped up and not working, just step back for a second and see what it's hung up on. Don't want to scratch or damage anything too bad if you've gone through all this effort. Uh, might have jumped a the gun there with the... Nope. Okay, you can still get these in. Lining up the four screws. Um, probably should have explained this before I started. So I didn't seat that cylinder all the way down yet. You can see there's still a gap there. If you look through there, you can still see the screws and the gasket. So basically what I'm doing is this cylinder is still loose and high enough up that I can fish the cylinder screws in and wiggle that gasket around to make sure I can easily line up the gasket for the four screws to drop through. So that's what you're gonna, that's what we're gonna do next here. Okay, I wish I could. Show you even more with the camera, but I'm trying to get the best I can. All right. Again, these are, ouch, these are T27 drive, Torx 27. I just use this screwdriver since it's long enough to get in there. Get everything lined up. <clears throat> thread or two. Now, there's probably, let's give this a shot, see if you can see this with the camera. Caddy corner down there, you can still get a pretty good eye on the gasket and cylinder um, down there so you can feed a screw in the caddy corner. That'll lock in the position of your gasket, make sure it's not gonna move around on you. Starting these screws, we're not driving anything home yet. Just put a needle nose to drop that in. So my fingers are too big. It's not quite lined up. That's why it's good to have the cylinder loose. So I'm just gonna gently tweak that gasket. Come on, there we go. And just a couple screws to help locate everything. So we have two screws in now. We'll keep going. Let's get this front one in. Ah! Okay, we're tipping over. There we go. Three. 
I don't think there's any hope of you guys seeing this in the camera. I can barely see it for myself. Use a pair of needle nose pliers to get them started. Unless you've got small enough fingers. All right, so now we got everything started. Just kind of wiggle this around a little bit, holding it down firmly in place. Tighten these screws up. So that just made contact. Got the caddy corner here. Same thing, just made. So I'm just gonna go around all four of these again, make sure these are snug. They are. All right, now we'll properly torque them down. Okay, for torquing down the cylinder head, the torque listed in the manual is 11.5 newton meters which is basically 102 inch pounds of torque so i couldn't i thought i had a setup to get like an actual socket driver down through these cylinder uh holes but i didn't so what i ended up doing was just putting a pretty uh drill a hole and put a pretty aggressive um self-tapping screw into the back handle give myself a little tattletale um, so that way I could put the torque wrench right onto the driver or the Torx driver tool I have here and torque it down on the T27. So what I'm going to do here is using the quarter inch drive torque wrench, I'm going to torque all of these down in a cross pattern to about half the torque value, 50 foot pound, or excuse me, 50 inch pounds. And then once they're tightened down to 50 inch pounds, I'll set the torque wrench up to 102 and do the final torque. All right, so my little uh, uh, cell tapping screw couldn't do the uh, 102 inch pounds, so put a 516 bolt in there and put a uh, eighth inch roll pin in there. So that should definitely be able to hold well, measly 102 inch pounds. So now we're doing the final torque here on the cylinder. Two inch pounds. All right, one hundred and two inch pounds. Remember, if you have a click style torque wrench. Always back it off to the lowest setting before you put it away. And there is the cylinder install. Okay, so now we're gonna come up on tightening this flywheel down with this uh, nut here. Uh, Torque on that is 33 newton meters, which is about 24 foot pounds. The way that I'm going to use to um, keep that still so I can actually get that torque on there is the rope method in the cylinder. So when we're tightening this, we're going to be turning this clockwise to tighten that nut. Um, it's a normal right hand thread. So we're looking down the spark plug hole into the cylinder so I can explain what I mean by rope method. So here we are, we're turning this, that piston is traveling downward see the light there that's the exhaust port 
going down, down, down. So now you can see, hey, look at that. There's that arrow that we talked about earlier. I didn't realize you could see that so easily through there. So at least we got the piston on, right? So we're going down, down, down. Now, still turning. Now we're coming back up toward top dead center. And looking in there, you can see, and we're now past the um, exhaust port. And so we're on the up stroke. So going a little bit farther to make sure that that piston is above those openings. And the reason for that is, let me grab the old one here and explain if you look inside the old piston basically or old cylinder excuse me you have all those ports you have the exhaust port uh the intake ports scavenging ports on the side uh we're gonna put rope inside of this cylinder and we're just gonna feed as much rope as we can in there and then that rope as we push the piston up um while we're trying to torque that flywheel down that rope is going to compress against the cylinder head and prevent the piston from traveling up which will let us get the torque that we need onto the flywheel nut if that piston is down below such that that rope could accidentally feed into one of those uh, side passages uh, you run the risk of that rope trying to get in there um, turning your engine into a uh, rope cutter which is a bad idea um, it's going to get rope jammed in between the uh, cylinder and the piston and cause all sorts of trouble so basically you just want to make sure that that piston is above those ports but still in the upward um swing so that way you're able to actually let it you know do some compression to, to counteract that torque that you put on the flywheel but far enough um but not far enough down that that rope's going to get into any of those passages so all right let's get that rope in there all right for a choice of rope uh pretty much anything that's not going to leave um like don't use like cecil twine or anything that's going to leave you know bits of um junk inside of your cylinder this is just uh 3 16 clothesline um rope from walmart so all we're gonna do is just take this rope and just keep feeding it into the cylinder here we're just gonna keep putting as much as we can in there until can't get any more brass rod to push more in if you're gonna use something to push this in don't use steel um you know get a piece of brass piece of plastic stick wood anything like that'll be anything softer than the metal that you're pushing into so you're not going to scratch it up and they're pretty good but while you're doing that, um, the other thing I'm doing is as I'm pushing this rope in here, I'm keeping an eye on the flywheel to make sure that I'm not going to start pushing that um, piston back down and expose those ports again. So, filled up there. I didn't push anything down below the exhaust port. Nope. Good. Good. Now you can see we're ready to torque this down. So turn that flywheel. And that's as hard as I can put it on there. So it's just pushing that rope up against the cylinder head. So let's go ahead and get that uh, not properly torqued down. All right. So, uh, the nut that I'm putting on, I had to replace that nut um, since the original flange nut got lost. Um, 13 millimeter socket, at least for the one I'm using. Again, 33 Newton meters, um, but that's also uh, 24 foot pounds if you're working in English units. So go ahead and get that. Torque down.
right, pretty easy there. Now just uh, back this off a little bit. Just like a magic trick, out comes the rope. Do a quick sponge check here, make sure we're good. Chop off any rope. Everything looks good. We're good. There you go. That's how you use rope to get that flywheel torque going. All right, next we are going to um, set the gap between the ignition module and the flywheel. The way that you do that is you rotate the flywheel around so that the magnets here are in line between the, the two ignition arms. Uh, the one's pretty obvious right there. The other one is down there. So what we're gonna do is um, loosen up these two screws and then the gap is set between this arm and the flywheel right there where the tip of that flathead screwdriver is pointing. That gap is 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 millimeters so uh, the process we're gonna get a feeler gauge um, 0 0.2 millimeters we're going to have put these screws loosened we're gonna stick it right in that gap there between this um, the arm and the ignition module and the flywheel and then we're gonna slide this ignition module tight up against that basically trap that feeler gauge in there and then we're gonna torque torque down this bolt and then that bolt and then we'll slide out that gauge and that should set the, uh, the gap correctly there Okay, so the feeler gauge I'm using, since I have an English set, is a eight thousandths of an inch, 0 0.203 millimeters, good enough for me. Already loosened up these two bolts. And then we're gonna slide this right in between like the manual says. So there's our gap. I'm gonna grab a screwdriver here. Just gently put a little bit of pressure on that arm. Get it nice and tight. So we're pinching that feeler gauge in there. It says to tighten the top bolt screw first, which is this one. So cinch that down. Find the back one here. I'm holding gentle pressure on there. Don't want to break anything. All right, so that's tight. Tightened up there. And then there we go. That gap is now set. Okay, the torque, final torque spec on those two ignition uh, module screws is eight Newton meters. Mm -hmm. pull Ready? Out. Turn, turn, turn. Okay, right, turn, 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 turn. Hold on, here, turn, turn this part. Oh, did it come out? Did you get it out? Okay, so we got the saw put back together, ready to give it the first test run. This saw has not run in probably seven years, so pretty excited that um, it's at least reassembled and we got a shot at it. So let's gas it up and give it a quick test run.
bad for first cut out of the gate for about just under $16 for the whole top end. So go ahead and get a bunch more hours on that top end and see what holds up.